open finance uh, is different than open banking. It's quite of an evolution of, of open banking. Eh? I think where, mm. where open banking uh, is focusing on, on payment initiation, uh, access to, to, to accounts, uh, open finance uh, goes way beyond that. It's, it's about uh, insurances, uh, getting investments in, all kind of other, other products. So it, it, will, it will open up, I think, a lot of new opportunities. And, and this is probably also why it's so hot. I think everybody goes crazy in terms of the use cases that you can think about. Uh, no, I agree. It's the unification. It shows one vision of all the financial instruments all in one place, which is really, really helpful. For sure, and I think it's yeah, it's so hot because we already see customer demand for open banking, uh, but open banking in that terms is also it's, it's limited yep. somewhere, right? It's uh, it's just payments, and if you want to have a good insights in financial situation, you need more data, and that's I think where open finance will will kick in. Absolutely. When we talk about open finance benefiting consumers and banking institutions, what we see here is the consumers will have visibility into various financial products that they traditionally wouldn't see without logging into various sites to be able to do that. The consolidation will start to occur. That will give them insight and ability to make better financial decisions. Additionally, for the financial institution, the bank, what they will start to see is a larger picture, a holistic picture of that person that traditionally was not visible to them. Yeah, exactly, and it will allow banks also to provide better and personalized advice Absolutely. Uh, to, the, to, to the consumers. I Absolutely. Think it's, it's, it's a limited insight, and that's always risky, right? I think, uh, and, 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 and uh, I think that's, there's still a lack of, of banks that can provide the full financial insight and give you good personalized advice because simply they lack the total. The, the whole total picture is gone, you. exactly. Yeah. And because of that, once, we, once they start to see that, the banks, banks will also start to see the benefit of risk reduction simply be due to the fact that all this information is present to them. The main drivers for financial institutions to adopt open banking and open finance really comes around to the fact that it makes the customer experience a heck of a lot better. Sure. Um, yes. the, the, the ability of the customer to be able to look inside and see all the activity occurring in one space is tremendous. Again, it gives that oversight and, and visibility to their financial standing across many different places. And that consolidation is really, really helpful. For the financial institution, it allows them to start offering a more catered approach to their customers because they have visibility into their activities across many different places. So again, when you think about this, you're looking at a financial institution being able to say, ah, well, I see that you have a mortgage occurring over here and I see you have a car payment occurring over here. Maybe we can offer you services to help along with that. Maybe there's a, a, a synergy here that we can use. Yeah, exactly. And I think the banks who, who jump on this the best, you know, will also have a competitive advantage in the end. And we saw the same with open banking. Some adopt quick, some, some uh, are slower. Uh, but I think if you have the right use case, it can help you also as a bank to be that differentiator and, and not to be dependent on paper information. You can in one go provide your customer highly automated and making sure that, that you can provide that advice instantly almost uh, because you have access to all of those accounts. Very true. And it was such a pain before gathering all that information and consolidating yeah. it to do a thing. Going to various financial institutions and pulling it all together. It, it would be tremendous to be able to do this in an automated fashion. Exactly. And don't talk about uh, just the, the business case, right? We also should, should not forget about that. I think um, it will bring down, let's, let's take a mortgage, right? Mm. Where you need all kind of information. It's not just the payment information that you need to have as a bank. If you can automate it, also the operational cost of actually a mortgage opening goes down. And I think there's even a, a third one that will be happening, that's the regulator, right? We mm. all know that when automation comes in place, uh, it's more auditable and it will make the regulator also happy. So customer oh. happy, bank happy, regulator happy. I think these are definitely um, evolutions that we're looking for. Absolutely. Well, I think we, we touched already a little bit about how we want to see this open finance uh, used. Heads. It will provide access to, to multiple products. It will provide that, that, that single overview of all your finances. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I think the, the, the challenge there is also to get this all in place. Uh, um, if you're just looking at, at banking only, it's easier to get one industry aligned. Now we have multiple industries, pension industry, investment industry, you need standardization. Uh, those things are, are really important to, to have a very you know, uh, clear framework that everybody can adapt. Because otherwise it will be really hard if you have multiple standards, if you have multiple mm -hmm. ways to do it. Uh, it, it, it will take quite a time. If you only look at open banking already, it took some time, but if you go multi-industry, it's challenging. So we need that, that regulatory and standardization framework, I think, around it uh, to, to, make, to make it easy, but also to make it safe. Uh, that's also really important these it days. It is. Yeah. And, I mean, a lot of the feedback that I've seen around this is that there's concerns because people really don't open, excuse me, understand open banking versus open finance versus the whole thing. Yeah. So what ends up happening is people are concerned about privacy and security exactly. elements of it. And it's 
it's been very difficult to communicate that effectively with those titles, open banking, open finance. We're really talking about maybe smart banking is a, a better term. Yeah. Open, open has this feeling of things are moving without your control. And I, I, I feel like that a lot of people have been held back. I know that Mambu did a survey of, I want to say 2,000 banking consumers and 52% of them were unaware of open banking. Yeah. And then of the ones that were aware of open banking, three out of five of them were concerned about privacy exactly. or security. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a big thing, right? It, and in the end, consumer adoption will drive it. So as long as, as, as consumers are hesitant to share data, which is logical, it's mm. your financial data, it says all about you if you have your transactions exposed. And this is, I think, also why we need that framework around it. It will provide more safety, it will also allow our customers to pick and choose what information do I want to, to share with who. Yes. Huh? Um, we also are running uh, projects where we have built a, a, a digital wallet, for instance, that allows consumers to, to really say this information for that one and only for that purpose. And, and I think in, in open finance, it also really becomes important to be in control of what you share. And That's really interesting. So yeah. when you say open finance, you're in control. So the consumer actually has that control at that level. They can decide what's being connected and when it's connected and when exactly. it turns off. Yeah, yeah because if I look at, at, at open banking now, PhD2, um, there's only one way you share all your transactions. Mm -hmm. And also, even I'm in the industry, I love this. I, I, I am always on the front run of new technology, but I'm also scared sharing all my transactions. And I know it's safe, yeah, there's, there's trusted third parties around it, but still, yeah, so, so you can imagine that the, the wider audience, there's still work to do there to make sure that people you know, see the benefits and also know that it is safe and helping them to be more in control no, will for agree. sure help. So in order to make open finance more accessible to customers, I think that there really needs to be an education process involved here. Again, when we look across consumers of these products, they don't understand what's going on. Um, and it's, I don't know exactly why that's occurring, but it is occurring. And what we need to do is really educate people in what's going on with this, and especially with the PSD3 standard that just came out, an expansion of that. Um, there's a lot of different protocols that are being enabled there. We're talking about you know, enhancing the APIs, we're talking about authentication simplification, we're talking about IBAN and name reconciliation for risk and for verification. There's those elements that are happening, but we need to be able to communicate effectively with the consumers about why these things are happening. Yeah, I think that's and I mean, from a financial institution, we understand why these things happen, yeah. uh, but to the consumer, they're not seeing the value specifically yet, I don't believe. And it, it's not being advertised as a value. Let me restate that. Yeah, I think that's a very good insight that you're saying there. I think uh, most of regulation and technology is, is all around the instrumental parts of making it safe, but feeling <laughs> safe, <laughs> feeling it's secure. That's that's what, what, what I think is, is very important to, uh, there. And PhD two uh, of PhD three, of course, uh, you know, picks all of these topics, but it doesn't talk about education. It doesn't talk awareness. about that. I think that's something that also the industry should probably pick up jointly oh. right, to make sure because everybody benefits. In the end of uh, having this open finance because in the end you can provide a better customer experience. So better customer experience better. and that insight again that just from, a, from a, a user of these products being able to look across my various portfolios and have that all consolidated into one, amazing. Yeah, no for sure but, but it might also be that, 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 that some banks are a little bit hesitant because it, there, there's a lot of costs also around this right and and I think a lot of banks that are coping with, with legacy uh, infrastructures, they will probably have a harder time and, and, and will, will uh, you know, be more costly uh, to, to adapt to these kind of things. But the modern banks with modern technology, uh, I think will, will be uh, you know, quicker to adapt. I, I, yeah. would, I, I agree 100% with that. But also, do you find, I mean, in, in my experience, I would think that the banks would see this as an opportunity to create a more sticky customer by being able to present this information to them. Yeah. And if you don't do, other, others will collect your information and exactly. you will become you know, less visible actually to your clients. So I think also in a competitive advantage, you should be an early adopter of these kind of things because that allows you to take that position yep. and grab the information from other banks and make them uh, less relevant. I think it's uh, it's also um, you know uh, a race there to be to be the the first mover in, uh, in expanding open banking to open finance. PSD3 will uh, for sure have an impact also on, uh, mm. on, on open finance. Uh, we discussed a few of those topics already, but I think the main ones are about making sure that the consumers <coughs> and also the business that share information um, um, feel safe. And PSD3 looks into other authentication me mechanisms, looks into 
uh, better data protection. So it will definitely allow customers to be more in control of what, what they share. And in that sense, PSD3 will be an accelerator. Uh, but, uh, but still, the thing that we also discussed earlier, the education, making people aware is still a very important thing around it. Absolutely, and again, I think a large component that, that people maybe miss when we talk about this is that they are in control of that connection. They decide what's connected up, they decide when it terminates, it's under their, their control. Yeah, that's a, that's a very important uh, piece of that. So uh, I hope uh, that these type of regulations, when they, they come into play, will, uh, will accelerate uh, these type oh, of... Uh, the dream. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Banks should take steps to adopt open finance in the future through really education. Again, I think that the thing holding back a lot of the industry has been the consumer education and understanding of what these products actually do and how they work and what information is being moved around inside of them. If you can alleviate the privacy and security concerns, which have to be germane to what I work in, then you help people understand the value of these things. But often they're stopping right away by saying, I don't understand what's going on. What do you mean my financial institution will have access to all these different things? I traditionally would not do that. Um, we need to explain the benefits to them of doing these types of things. Yeah, for sure. I think that's that's a very important uh, accelerator that we have. And, and I think the second one, banks needs to make sure that that technology allows it to right, to allow that, that they can get that data, that they can make it secure. And this also is, I think, a very important um, uh, driver there to be ready and make sure that your technology is ready, that your architecture is future proof, not just for the, the first steps of open finance, but also for the future steps very of solid. open finance and making sure that you connect your, your AI um, uh, platforms to it and get the best out of it. I think that's a very important uh, no, you're second dimension right. too. Yeah. We, we, we can't move forward without the technology. No, for sure. <laughs>